Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to, to Sheikh and to all of the brothers. Alaikum salam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What is being recited before Sheikh Luqman Effendi starts to climb the mimbar Rasul alayhi salatu salam and while he was climbing step by step on the mimbar? Please tell us this tradition and protocol and what its connection is to the holy Ottomans. I'm a murid from India and I never got to witness this type of tradition here. Ay, mashallah. That's good. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That is a sunnat. It is a forgotten sunnat. Hmm? To know a sunnat means the Prophet ﷺ used to do that. And it is not to say that only when climbing the minbar, the Prophet ﷺ is speaking to his Allah and asking and making a dua. His every footstep is speaking to his Lord and asking. His every breath is a dua. The closer you are to those who are representing him, to those whom he loves and they love him, the more you're going to understand what is there, the more you're going to do. You may not know all the words, you may not be memorizing all the words, but you know the essence of what it is and you're going to do it. There is a reason why there are the number of steps according to the Ottomans. Some only needs three, as the Sunnah is the three, because of the space that they were in. Some you need maybe 40 steps because of the space that they are in. It is according to holy numbers and holy traditions. Now, that the knowledge of the Prophet did not end 1400 years ago. It keeps on opening up through his inheritors. Uh, as far as saying the sunnah, uh, saying the dua of the sunnah is, uh, to make it simple, we are, uh, every time you step up, for example, it is sunnah to say subhanallah. Uh, or you say Allahu Akbar. Some they're saying, when you go down, you say Subhanallah. Some they're saying Astaghfirullah when you go down, but even climbing up, you say Allahu Akbar. And we're asking, as usual, uh, blessings on the Prophet ﷺ and uh, the stur and himmat from our Shaykh. Then we are remembering the dua also of uh, saying, for example, uh, protect me from the nazar of the people. And asking Allah, saying this honor is not my honor, and this maqam is not my maqam. Ya Rabbi, forgive me and make me to be better than what people uh, see me as. That is also taken from Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. Then you may ask, uh, whatever that is in my heart, Ya Rabbi, that is good, let it to come out. So if you understand all of this, you may speak in your own way to Allah. If you want to memorize the dua in his Arabic, that's fine. But what is the good of memorizing the dua in his Arabic full of tajweed and everything and you don't know the meaning? For us in this Ahir Zaman, it is more important the meaning. And then you may ask other things that is necessary for you. When you're entering into a masjid, I'm looking around, so many people, they're entering, they don't even have any Niyat when they enter into the masjid. There is a dua. There is a niyat when you enter the masjid. If you make that niyat, if you make that intention, then every second that you spend in the, in the masjid, it is considered as if you are in seclusion. Yes? The word itself is iktikaf. And the dua itself is, I'm making intention to do iktikaf in this masjid. That is one example. Are we limited to that? No. We can say, I'm making intention that my 
stay here becomes an iktikaf in this jami, I'm making intention to leave my ego behind and my shaitan behind. I'm making intention to learn as much as I can to become a better one. As many intentions, good intentions, you can do that. That time you're awake and you're aware, you're not just coming in, walking like this. Prophet ﷺ sitting down, he has a dua. <laughs> Getting up, he has a dua. Stepping out of the house, he has a dua. Now if you understand that those who are that the beloved of Allah is always thinking of his Lord and always asking, you know that. You can ask Allah to, following his tradition. If you want to memorize, like I said, memorize. If you cannot memorize, then speak in your own words, in the tradition of your Prophet. Shri Maulana, when he is leaving the house, he has a dua, asking that uh, space and time will fold for him to travel, as our Shaykh does. Now, for us, what is our Shaykh saying? For the Murids, our Shaykh is saying, I do not even open the uh, door without asking Himmat and Madat from my Shaykh. So what we are, want is support. We say Dastur, Madat, Dastur, Madat, Madat, Dastur. The one who says, don't forget, say Madat, he's forgotten years ago. That's why he's always sleeping. And <laughs> crying and this. If you have Madat, you're not going to be doing all those things. You're not going to be bothering people, men's, women's. You're not going to, because the Madat is reaching to you and the Madat is going to stop you. from doing wrong things. <laughs> so, you hear sometimes a murid, they say everything, they say dastur. They enter into a room, say dastur. Dastur is asking for permission. Ultimately, it's asking Allah's permission. Meaning, you don't just enter into, you know there is an owner. Ya Malikul Mulk. You're asking permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, you're asking from Him, you're asking from all those ones who are in authority, that is given that authority. Not just you entering into a space because you know there's some Muslim taifas there and you're asking their permission eh, there. You don't believe the Prophet is there. Isn't he supposed to be Hazir and Nazir? <laughs> it's more than that. Huh? So, <sighs> teaching you the, mm, let's say, the essence of it, but also an easier way to be able to practice it. Up to you whether you practice or not. Wa min Allahu Tafiq al-Fatiha.